We know that a changing climate changes everything. It changes the birds that show up in our backyard. It changes our food supply. It changes our water supply. It affects every aspect of your life when you think about it. We need the next generation of leaders to make those connections. As a kid, I would always go in and read Nikola Tesla and Leonardo da Vinci's notebooks. My fondest memory as a kid was honestly just going around the house, picking up five random objects and trying to piece them together. So I would pick up a straw and a spoon and you know, a piece of metal and anything else I could find. And the goal was to put them together in some way that could serve some sort of function around the house. When other kids were outside playing football and basketball, it's not everyone who has two patents by the time they're 16 years old. Why is an entrepreneur an entrepreneur? It's because they saw something that mattered to them, something that didn't work, and they tried to figure out a way to fix it. I was about 11 or 12, and I was sitting in a car. We were stopped at a red light. I saw the emissions coming out of the exhaust of the car in front of me. I thought, why is carbon dioxide being emitted into the atmosphere? And right then, something clicked. I knew exactly what I wanted to do in my life. It went from just an idea to a couple of sketches on a napkin. And you know, the next step was to go to the hardware store and walk through the aisles and find materials that, that could work to build some sort of initial prototype. Just knowing what I could do for the environment really drove my passion towards finding solutions. I would sit at my dining room table while my parents were cooking, and I'm sitting there with duct tape and sheets of metal. It went through hundreds of iterations, and then I started talking to a lot of people. He's very hard on himself. He's a perfectionist. Is he biting off more than he can chew? I think that's the big challenge. One of the biggest problems with, I think, how we see environmental issues is that we get really cynical, but I feel like the entire script needs to be changed to rethink the way we see these problems as more you know, creative opportunities. When I was really young, I remember learning about things like photosynthesis, you know, how plants take in this source of energy and then um, we're able to emit oxygen and um, biomass for, for the plant itself. You know, one thing that I think most people don't know is that only 30% of the oxygen in our atmosphere comes from the rainforest. 70% is coming from marine plants like algae in the ocean. Algae is like a superhero biological agent. They not only grow really, really fast, but they also absorb much of the carbon dioxide that's in our atmosphere. That really was the reason why I, I decided to use algae in my initial prototypes. And as I started building things, I came up with the EcoTube. The EcoTube is a device that fits directly into the exhaust stream of a car, and it reduces carbon emissions using the photosynthesis of algae. So basically, the EcoTube has staggered plates with algae that we've grown in the lab to capture carbon dioxide for the algae, to then emit oxygen into the environment. The EcoTube, which I think is the lead hardware device at this point, is fantastic. It's an incredible, incredible device. So the EcoTube is a um, aftermarket retrofit device that reduces carbon emissions directly from the exhaust of uh, any motor vehicle. I'm gonna put something on, on my tailpipe. It's gonna collect uh, the CO2, yeah. right? Can a consumer do this themselves? Yes, any user can simply snap it on. We're giving consumers an ability to reduce their carbon emissions um, with the existing vehicles that they have. Will this save drivers uh, money? Uh, no, it won't. Interesting. When you're young and you have a crazy idea, you're mostly going to see rejection. But you have to understand that why you're doing what you're doing. It's because you actually want to solve a problem. If you really think about the implications that it has long term on the world, you know, it's not only a great value proposition monetarily, but also great from a social impact perspective. The dream is to live in a world where we go out of our way to do things that better our world and sustain our planet. But I don't think a lot of people live by that philosophy. Until things like electric vehicles and renewable sources of energy catch up, we need some sort of technology to reduce our carbon emissions to sustain our planet. Something needs to be done to reduce greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. I think it's really important to kind of stay with your beliefs and stay with your vision of what the world is going to look like. The way we've lived in the past is that we're human, we dominate the world. And I really think we need to reimagine our basic definition of what we think it is to be human.